In this episode, we make gear for a post-apocalyptic event, like this weather jacket. First step finally done, and I look like a rock star from the 80s. Now, finally, the weathering. I want to get to that rugged, dirty look that I showed you on the previous jacket. And I've seen a lot of how-to videos on the net doing this, working with gravel and dirt and pulling the jacket behind a car and all those kind of things. And I'm not going to do any of that. Instead, I'm going to work with acrylic paint. So it's going to be a layer of paint on top to make it look dirty. That way I don't feel dirty while wearing it. This job is not about detail. So I'm using the cheap pencils and I'm using the cheap colors. And it will be perfectly fine to use that. And it's mostly about dry brushing to get the feel of being torn and used as well as to get some more structure into the fabric. So by now it's very 80s. Next step, fix the buttons. If I would have the time, I would probably change this for, for different buttons and have a bunch of different ones. But honestly, I don't have the time or energy. So I'm just gonna do something about the ones that's already here. And then after that, it's aging all of it, making it really dark and dirty. So first I shined it up and then it's gonna be dirty. A small and uneven highlight of silver brings out some more detail into the buttons. And it's also uneven to make it feel like it's old and not perfect. At this point I bring in a bit of a more of a quality color. So it's a citadel wash. Because making a wash out of cheap cars doesn't really work. And this I can also water down quite a bit. It's just to make more of a shadow on those buttons. If you ever painted figures like Warhammer or something like that. The next technique that I'm going to use after this is kind of the same as dry brushing. And this is what I mean when I say that we should look at each other. Because this, this is a craft that a lot of LARPers would do. And minifigures is something completely different. But still, we can learn from each other. And by using that technique from minifigure painting, I can make a better work here than I would be otherwise. On the jacket I showed you earlier, I used a brown beige weathering color. And I think that would fit quite well here as well. But I want to distinguish this one. So I'm going more for a neutral gray and we'll see how it goes. The trick is, again, I'm doing minifigure painting. So it's dry brushing, it's pure dry brushing. Starting with a darker color and then going up the lighter colors up, up until something that's uh, bone white or something like that. And we'll see how many layers I need. I'm going to spread it unevenly and I'm going to focus on the pieces of clothing I believe would take the most damage. And now we're going for the big and really bad brushes because I don't want to destroy anything I actually use. I'm not going to give you any names of any specific colors because I don't want you to copy this exactly. I mean, it's not a secret. I wanted to take the ID, not the exact colors, because it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to start in, in brownish colors, going through them, up through some almost flesh tones, beige, yellowish, up to ivory, and maybe even pure white. I'm putting a minimal amount of paint into the paintbrush. And then using it on the clothing. You really just need to get a feel for it. This first layer is brown, almost black, same color as the leather, which is perfect. That means that when I put it onto the colors here, it looks like it's been scratched. And I know you can't see that much yet. This is a bit of a lighter color, so now you're gonna see more. And it's a too, bit too much in the brush, so I'm trying to get some out of it. The more wrinkles there are in the leather, of course, the more detail there will be. So when there is no wrinkles, I'm adding wrinkles. Here, for example, I have a seam going this way. So I'm trying to dry brush in this direction. It's just like dry brushing anything else. Go where there are details and bring those details out. Remember the previous jacket, the brown one? That one also started off black. Black is a good base color here. So if you're gonna do this, go for a black leather jacket. It's much easier to use than anything else. Go 
we're closing in on the final colors. I think we're three or four layers. Honestly, I don't know exactly. But of course, still, it's just like uh, dry brushing a minifigure. Um, the lighter the color, the less of it you put on. So by now I'm only painting the corners. And I will go one more layer, which is almost white. Also, since I'm not giving you the exact colors, this is the color palette. So you can see it's gray, white. This brown part I'm actually not using, that's just from the mixing. What I've been doing is I'm taking a bit of red, reddish yellows and then I'm putting just a hint of blue in there, really dark blue, to bring out these dirty gray colors instead. So in this case I'm using the dirty gray colors, but of course you can use whatever you want. That's it. That's a labyrinth inspired 80s coat in a Mad Max setting. If you like this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below so I know if I should make any more of them. And be sure to subscribe. Next week we are destroying a car and you don't want to miss that one. Oh, you know you get a bit dirty by doing the dry brushing on the small figures, right? Let's just say you need to clean your hands after this one.